we're going to grab the length from here. Len vm.getreg. Then we'll do vm. Uh, vm. Base adder is equal to. Hmm. What do I want to do? What do I want to do for this one? One second. Got to use mana. Someday I'll write my own syscall. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of your keyboard? It's a DOS keyboard uh, with Cherry MX Blues. It's a decent distance from the microphone, so it doesn't sound too loud. It's probably a, a lot louder in person. Uh, base adder. This is going to be equal to context dot... Oop, not that context. VM dot context dot alloc base VMID. Get the base address for this allocation, and then we'll do vm.context.alloc base context mute dot alloc base vmid plus equals len plus 64 uh, and ox3f. Uh, we'll do 128. So, like, uh, Add some padding between allocations and also um, and also round to the nearest 64-byte boundary such that the allocations are always 16-byte uh, aligned. Uh, 16, and then here, we actually don't care about how much space we're using up. We'll just do F. So we add a page of paging between allocations. And then we uh, mask that length and not F. That'll update the alloc base. This base address is what we're going to give here. And then we'll do vm.mmu.addMemory uh, for vmm at vert adder base adder for len bytes. Vim.mmu.set permissions. Shit. Dot dot slash mmu source set permissions. Okay. Set permissions on vmm vert adder base adder for length bytes. And we're going to set them to perm read or perm write or perm raw. So read after write and write only, so they would fault on a read unless they're written to first. And then add memory. Add memory I don't think actually takes a VMM. Okay. This is uh, map add and map in the memory. I should probably do the add memory outside for perf and just do it once, but uh, this will be fine for now. I'm going to set that to perm write and perm raw. And that should build. So that's now going to create an allocation. And then we need to do one more thing here. We'll do, we got a log that this allocation occurred. vm.context mute dot allocations vmid dot inserts base adder len. So update allocation state. Real good. Okay, attempted to add memory that already exists. Yeah, uh, so we'll just do this at the very start. This will make it faster anyways. Um, it's like add some memory for allocations. And we'll put this at alloc base. Ah, 32 megs is probably enough. Now we're not adding memory. We're just setting permissions. Those permissions will get reset to the initial state every time. Initially, there are no permissions for it, so it's not mapped in. Unhandled syscall uh, 222. Mmap. 
Really? Shit. What's causing an M-map? Ah. Oh. 1DC98. 1DC98. That's Malik. That's Mal- it's Malik. It's Malik. 1DC98. Oh, um, I need to ret. I need to ret. Um, I can't, I can't continue execution past that syscall. Yep. Uh, so I need to vm.setreg, vmm register PC with, uh oh. Uh oh. I don't actually have a good way to jump all the way out. Ah, I, I, I have a I have a way of doing that. It's really easy. It's called add a ret uh, to the to the code. Let's find a ret somewhere. There you go. We get donor. Donor kebab. And we got this ret. And now it'll actually return after doing our fake syscall, which is a totally legit syscall, and then we don't have to worry about that. Hey, one question, what's up? Okay, Malik A0. Ah, crash read, accessing, uh, okay. Uh, mm. Mm. Base adder is alloc base. Alloc base plus equals len plus 4096 and not f. What is that? One for AFO. Sterlen. <laughs> oh my god. Really? Oh my god. What's Colin Sterling? 14A80? Yeah, that's Sterling. Yeah, and that looks like it's uh just about out of bounds on 1BB7 on the stack. Ooh, file name, file name, file name. Ah, uh, null terminated. One, two, three, four, five, six. Isn't that stack? Oh, it's uninitialized stack read. God damn it. What is what is reading uninitialized off the stack? One F six five C? One of six five C to urge her. Wait a minute. I know this bug. One of six forty. To urge her, and it's being called from here. Two oh nine oh eight. Two oh nine oh eight colon. To urge her. This is in. It's it's here. It's in main. And cur file warn. What? Like, I, I know we have a bu- uh... Oh, is it in find entries? Uh, oh, that might be a new one then. We might have a new bug. File dot... We pass it woo dot c. It's to Urchers. It does a Sterling on file. File is null terminated. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, find entries. Argv step.
if we failed to open the file at step, step is the remaining flag. Yup. We saw the F open. If it failed, print this warning and exit. Otherwise, go to find entries. Find entries. Yeah, and that's off of Alec. Oh, um, write woo.c. Print file name at x. I bet, I bet this will just panic this. This is, this is going to be, this might be the 1040. God, I'm so fucking stupid. File name, dot zero. Is this the 1040? Yeah, it is. Uh, Alec. And then I write to it. That should then become readable. Why is it... Why is it crashing on trying to read that? Why is my write not causing that to get initialized? Um... Yes, you are. <laughs> Kappa. Kappa. Huh. What's interesting is so far I haven't had a bug in my code, which is great. Was also... Honestly, no surprise. Oh my god. Sterlin. Sturcher. I bet this goes bytes. I wonder if this does, uh... I wonder if Sterlin reads out of bounds, maybe? No, because it's reading it's reading at that look like what I'm curious is if it's reading eight bytes at a time. If there's a load D word in here. There is a oh there is a load D word. Oh, uh, is that where we're crashing? Oh, uh, one for AFO. Why is it loading a D word? It's it's a it's doing a sterling on a thing it doesn't know the length of. And it's using a load D word. Oh my, you son of a bitch. Wow, we maybe found a musil bug or a really weird musil optimization where they assume that everything is, uh, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Okay, let's, um, learning how programmers say words, Sterlin, yeah. It's a reasonable assumption, is it though? It's not guaranteed that you don't have a null terminated string on the end of a heap allocation or allocation or some shit. So let's check it out. Sterlin. Oh my god. It checks the address. You piece of shit. It assumes that if, if, the address is zero, is eight byte aligned, that you can read eight bytes. Fuck off. That's just not how that. <sighs> ha, stupid. Stupid. They all do that. It can never cause a crash, but it's oob. That's so stupid. Don't do that. Don't do that. Vim. Oh. Now I'm going to have to get a, a build a new fucking libc. Because this one sucks. Oh. 
Oh. Why? Why? That's not a... Um... Dude, is it gonna be all of these? Break the stack? Uh... Huh. A line. If dev GNUC. Maybe I could just turn that off? I could probably just turn off GNUC. May alias. Jesus. How many things do this? Gotta lay off the edibles, man. Let pe let people edible in peace, you know. May al alias Malik, we don't care about because we deleted it. Mem move. I mean, mem, mem move and mem copy; those have to be fine. The sterl, the sterl friends are probably the ones that are gonna do some weird shit. So we'll just do this uh, if zero and if, and we fixed it. And then uh, Sterl copy is probably gonna do the same shit. If G and U C do this shit four bytes at a time, if it contains a zero anywhere in there, then bail out. Yeah, fuck off. Okay, what else we got? Anyone else? Sturchernal, you want to get smoked too? All right, bye bye. If zero, and if. Who else wants to play? Sterl copy. We did that one. We did this one. We did Sterlin. Uh, Sturpen copy. If zero, and if. Please don't tell me they're gonna do this in mem copy and mem move. There's no way. There's no way. There's. Um, let's see what it's doing. Yep, if that mem copy is less than source, go through. While this and uh, WS, which is the alignment, I think. Then that's going to go a line at a time while the length, right? If you have a length, you should you should use the length. I'm going to assume that that's happening. And then stupid copy. Same shit here. If zero. And if. In fact, RG has zero. Has zero. This. Stip copy. Mimk copy. What is this? Mem C copy. Copy mem memory area. What? I've never used this. Align. Copy is no more than n bytes from memory. Stopping when character C is found. <laughs> Gross! Gross! Are you kidding me? So we killed Stip Copy. Dude, that is a disgusting function. Get out of here. You don't deserve to exist. Wow. That is a disgusting function. I prefer to forget that it exists. So I think we've killed all these. We're killing bug classes right now. Uh, if zero, M mem mem memter should be fine. Memter should be fine. 
uh, for this, if it's aligned and there's N, fuck off. Dude, who, if the memory is, it's still going to do it, even if you give it N is 1. Let's see, N is 1, S is aligned, that passes, this passes, if N, uh, actually, is this going to do a whole thing at a time? If N is greater than SS, W++, plus plus. I think this one's fine, but I'm still going to get rid of it. Wow, that is gross. That is gross. All right, make, clean, all, build a new tool chain. Have to build a new binary, ship it up, fix up my offsets and shit. Got a new musil. Gross. Gross. Okay. Make. Make. Clean all. Dude, I got my scoop in here. Nope. Scoop. Uh, test app. File land. C tags. Risk V. It's probably, probably what I call that file. I don't know, actually. Kind of guessing. C tags risk V, yep, and then we gotta fix up all the addresses that might have changed. You know, we could be smarter and like actually figure out what these addresses are, but that's no fun. Malik colon uh, 1D9 B4. 1D9 B4. Okay, realloc. Uh, there we go. And free address. That's a good one. And then the entry point. It's probably the same. One, 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 E, E, eight, eight. One, yeah, that's the same. I'm not surprised with that one. Okay, so that should be all of our hard-coded addresses. I could potentially just run it through, like, a script and figure out what the addresses are for some of these things. And then... Use the debug symbols. Unhandled syscall 6.2. That looks good. Um, that's probably read v, rec, uh, read v. That's probably read V. Uh, 6.2. Space 6.2. LSeq. Okay. It's going to get the length of the file first. That should be pretty easy. We actually might need to set up the fuzz inputs now. Uh... And the fuzz inputs I can get from aisle session input, right? Fuzz inputs. Uh, they're just inputs. No, they're fuzz inputs, aren't they? Fuzz inputs, option, vector, vector, width. All right, perfect. Let's set up some inputs. Uh in fuzz we'll do vm dot fuzz inputs dot iter mute dot for each x if x dot is none x equals sum vec new else otherwise X dot clear. We'll add some more parens here, or curlies. Clean this up a little bit. Uh, this is going to be reset all the fuzz inputs. So go through each of the fuzz inputs. If there isn't one, then set it up to an empty vector. That'll happen the first time we go through. Otherwise, just clear it out. Perfect. Clear not found on option. Uh, if let sum x equals x, x dot clear. Else x is that. 
Okay. So I'll clear out the existing input, and it'll only do allocations the first time fuzz is called, which is good. Allocations are slow. We can't afford to do them. Well, in this case, it probably doesn't matter. Uh, lseek. Okay. 62. This is a lseek. Um, man, lseek. Okay. It's going to take an fd an offset, and a wince. And then here, I'm just going to assert that FD is equal to, where's open? There we go, this. Assert that the FD is equal to this. FD wasn't our magic FD. Okay, and then here we'll say like, ah, uh, we can actually maybe hash map it. Uh, struct file state offsets u size uh, file states uh, hash map file descriptor to file states uh, eight entries. Okay. I think that's going to be cleaner for each this is file states. I call it file state or file file states. File states. Like a snake. Okay, it looks great. And file states. Okay, so then open at here. Uh, VM dot context mute dot file states VM ID dot insert four two eight two with a file state this offset zero. I guess we don't know if it's an append mode. This isn't a complete implementation. <laughs> of the uh, of Unix <laughs> probably I probably should but I, ju I just kind of want to see this running and then and then we'll go and just rewrite this whole fucking thing because we did a terrible job uh, okay that's gonna insert that in the file state and then this is going to uh, offset and wince we're just gonna assert that wince is equal to probably seek set seek end actually we'll just see what it's we'll see what it's doing panic one two three fd offset whence so far we haven't seen an emulation bug though might have actually written the emulate emulator perfectly first try not too surprised so we got a lseek, that's going to be a seek set, and it's going to seek one byte ahead. Okay. Uh, if, whence, oh, whence is, that was actually seek end, I think. Seek cur. Oh. Probably should figure that out. rg seek cur dot dot uh, user include. Uh, define dot star seek cur. Okay, seek cur. Seek cur. Uh, we'll say zero is seek set. Else if whence is equal to one. Else if whence is equal to two. Else unimplemented actually unreachable can't get here we got seek set seek cur seek end okay and then here we'll just say uh, self actually vm dot context mute dot file states fd dot 
offset plus equals whoops plus equals offset equals offset mm, panic you and k man lc i think it returns the uh, resulting offset location in bytes. So here we'll just say handled next VM and set the reg to this something like that. That's lseek ish. File states with an S. Okay, offset is equal to offset. Offset is plus equals. Um, file states VMID for FD. Yeah, now we got some new line issues. That's fine. We'll just do this. Looks great. You might want to change this if else to a match. Yeah, it's probably fair. That's probably fair. Uh, can't assign. Deref that shit. Oh, do I need to do get mute? Might need to do get mute. Yup. Mute. Dot unwrap. Dot get mute. FD. Dot unwrap. Is that really what I need to do here? 198. Yep. Here it's unhappy. Let offset is equal to this. It's not efficient. I know. I know. We're just doing it. Getting it done. Finishing it up. Dot offset. Okay, so that'll allow it to seek uh, without bounds checks. It's good. Um, offset, that's fine. That's all sign extended anyways. Everything is already 64 bits. Uh, unhandled syscall 63, that's going to be read right there. 63, this is a read. It's gonna, we'll grab the FD. We'll have an FD, a buffer, and a count. And then one, two, if the uh, let offset, we'll just grab this. We'll grab the offset from this. I'll panic if it fails, that's fine. And then we'll just do uh, we'll do let bread is equal to count, uh, I guess. We don't know how many bytes are there, so we'll do let input is equal to a reference. Actually, we can do vm dot fuzz inputs vm id as ref dot unwrap. I'll get the fuzz input. Good, and then we can do vm dot write to vmm vert adder buff for inputs uh actually input will be equal to input dot dot standard compare min the smaller between the two of count and input dot len then we'll just write in the inputs and this is written is equal to this and then we'll just copy those and set this to written uh, vm.mmu dot write so get the buffer, get the counts ooh oh cause input is borrowed 
take vm.fuzz inputs vmid equals input. Uh, take dot unwrap. That'll give us ownership of that value, and then that will let us put it back in there. Maybe that's why I did that before. Uh, and then we'll call that original input, O input, and then we'll put this back in there. We'll just we'll just take it out temporarily and squeeze that back in there, and then O input here. So we're gonna slice it up based on the count, which was from outside, or the O input, whichever is smaller. And then we'll try to write the bytes from the input file. Oop, uh, we didn't use we didn't use offsets. So do let input equals input offset dot dot. Slice that shit up. O input. And now these are just input. O input is only for those. So slice it up to skip offset bytes in. Um, I think that's gonna end up trashing because it's gonna go like it's gonna seek out of bounds. I think we'll just do this if offset. Uh, well, we'll leave it for now. We'll we'll come back to it. We'll fix it. It'll definitely crash. I'm pretty sure. Oh, that just oh that almost fits. But yeah, that's probably going to crash because uh, it'll seek out of bounds. And I think on EOF, this is going to fail. But whatever. So we'll grab the fuzz input. It'll write the number of bytes red. And then we get a 57. That's probably a close. Yeah, we got a close. Nice. So we'll do 57. Close. Get the FD. And we'll do uh, then we'll vm dot file states file states vmid dot remove fd I think ref that and then handled continue return no error some people actually do check error codes on close which is crazy but they do uh, zero on success. Okay, file states, uh, context mute dot file states vmid. Remove that from the contexts. And uh, we might be completing a fuzz case now. It's not doing anything because the file is empty, but it's a uh, ballpark. Uh, 2002, we got a free. All right, I can handle freeze. Freeze are easy. Uh. Okay, 2002, we got a free, and then actually I'm just going to assert on this remove, assert that this is sum. Then down here, I'm going to do basically the same thing, assert that vm.contextmute dot... Actually, we'll get the let let old is equal to vm context mute dot allocations vm id. This is going to be the adder. Uh, adder uh, dot remove adder. So we're going to free that, and then we'll unwrap it. Uh, expect double free. Mm-hmm. Or like invalid free, which is uh, pretty good. Um, we might have to add a check on uh, free as a void. Uh, we might have to add a check on null to allow a, a free of null. Um, but for now, we'll fail. We'll fail closed, and then we'll figure that out later. And then here we'll do uh, set permissions to zero. For len bytes, um, and this is old. That's the length. So unmap the malloc, uh, the memory. So this gets 
get the length of the allocation from the allocation database and then map at the base address here. We know the base address is correct because it wouldn't match in the database and then we handled it. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we're good there. Son of a bitch. Really? Freeing x adder. Maybe it's passing null. Uh, print allocated. Uh, we're not going to be able to see that. Let's just see if it's freeing null. It might be freeing null. Um, freeing null. Ah, see? I told you. I told you I might have to do that. If adder is equal to zero, handle next. I wasn't expecting it right away, but uh, nevertheless, free, if address is null, then just it's handled, go to the next VM. I think we did it. I understand nothing what you're doing, but I'm a programmer, uh, but web and software. Yeah, I've actually never really done web dev. Okay, we're uh, completing fuzz cases now. Not too bad. Uh, 30,000 a second. All right. Shit. What was like one of my good bugs? I had some, I had some easy bugs. Let me go through my uh, bug list. Uh, wherever that was. Let me find the gist. Gist uh, GitHub. Dot com, C tags, and we'll go here. This is the link I'm looking at, by the way, if anyone's interested. All right. So I should have, I have the global buffer overflow. That's, that's honestly a pretty good one. Uh, needs the X command line option. Let's find one that doesn't need that. Dash U. We have some null DREFs. Those are just on allocation failures. A lisp out of bounds global read. Dot L def reading out of bounds of the L buff global buffer. All right. I think I want to put L buff into a um, heap allocation uh, just to make it fail a little bit better and cleaner. So we're going to go into uh, where do we want to go? We want to go and we want to modify that binary and reship it. Hopefully that ha uh, hopefully that's not going to change. Yeah, I'm kind of afraid that this might end up changing some of the perf or some of the offsets, but that's fine. That's fuck it. I've done harder things in my life. Uh, C tags dot C. There's a global buffer called L buff line max. We're gonna turn it into a pointer. It's gonna be null. And then in main, right at the start, we're gonna do L buff is equal to malloc. Uh, line max. I think it was line max, right? Yep. Okay. If not L buff return negative one so fail early uh attempt to create the local uh global buffer and then that one in theory um that'll now get uninitialized memory tracking on there too but i don't know if that's something i'm gonna want but we'll see we might have to initialize that uh Oh, yeah, we're, we're going to have some, like, size of this, I think, that I have to change. Redefinition of lbuff in ctags.h lbuff. This is now a pointer to line max. And then uh, rg size of dot star lbuff. 
vim lisp dot c size of and this will just be line max uh, fortran line max and then vim c tags dot c size of dot star l buff line max line max line max okay make clean all test app should still work okay scp i should have the scoop in here history grab scoop there we go Okay, and then we have to dump that. Malik, these might not have changed. They might, ah, they probably did. 1D9 before. Please, 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 please. Hey! All right, they're all good then. So that's gonna now allocate the L buff buffer. Okay, oops. Um, so we're getting fuzz cases. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I actually want to re snapshot it kind of further in execution. Uh, cause I don't want it to go through the initialization stuff. I actually probably want to fuzz after open at, but eh. This target, I don't care about much, so I'm not going to put much effort into this. I'm just, I'm just going to get it running. And then uh, SP6502 uh, source, dot, dot, slash 6502 test source main FN fuzz. We're going to clear all those buffers out. And we're just going to copy... Elk base, clear all those out. Mutate input, get an existing input from the database. Yeah, we'll just do this. Yoink, paste. Okay, mutate input, we're gonna have to add that. Uh, so this is gonna be input. Evacuate. That's just a, a buffer that we kind of keep around. We got fuzz. We got some RAND shit going on here. We got some... This is generating the arguments, which, you know, we probably should do. Yeah, we'll leave this in here. But we'll come to that. Ah, we'll delete it. We have it in the other file. Uh, right to the file name address. Ooh, am I going to want that? Make sure the length is sane. Corrupt some shit. Put the input back in there. Args. Okay, we're like probably pretty close. Uh, Args 205. Input context. Yeah, we don't, we don't care about these things right now. These are, these are not important. Uh, what else we got here? 138, aisle session, oh, get rid of the underscore, max input size, yeah, we'll grab that, uh, context, 167, let's get rid of the underscore, that's the global context, I see, 177 online. Yep. Let online equals vm dot online. Strings. Ah, I forgot. Okay. File name address. We'll put those in these global contexts right here. Paste them here. File name address. Uh, we'll allocate a little bit more room for the file name. We'll allocate like uh, 
1024 bytes, that should be big enough. And then we have strings. Strings, we want to parse with the world's best parser. And then we'll grab these, paste that, file name address. This is going to be equal to file name, I'm pretty sure. We're like getting close here. Include stir, uh, uh, copy 6502 test strings dot. Args 189. Write the args. Yeah, don't care about that right now. 145. Take on inputs. Yep, we'll put this in a little option. Uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. We never use file name adder. Okay, cool. And we never use online. Yep, so here, I'm going to want to write in the file name. File name. Um, where do I generate a random file name? I need to do that here. Ah, it's where I had this L like that. Okay. So we'll have the file name will be woo dot whatever. And then we'll go down here and we'll do vm dot mmu dot write to online context dot file name adder and honestly we just know it's gonna be woo dot c zero one two three four plus four dot zero plus four vert adder and then we'll write a random character Uh, so I'll write in the randomly mutate the extension. And then this is going to panic because we're not going to have the uh, chur.asbytes. Okay. That should work. This is going to panic because it's going to get a file name that it doesn't expect. It's going to be like, whoa, you tried to read like woo.l or y or c or, or I guess... Anything other than .c, I think, should cause an exit or a crash. We'll call it a hard panic. Decodes look good. Looks like it's lifting stuff. Uh, three inputs. We're still lifting a bunch of stuff. It's just all single-threaded. Uh, slice index. Oh, we got some issues. Okay. Uh... Ooh, I think I, I think I brought this up, didn't I? I think I was expecting this to happen. Uh, yeah, I think I was expecting this to happen if I get to the, uh, I probably should set Rust backtrace. That's probably on the read. Here, I'm guessing, because I'm taking an offset from here, which could be arbitrary. Starts at that. All right, we'll step back, Trace. Um, I think I can do this. We'll see. Now I gotta wait 30 seconds again for the results. Yeah, LTO has made these functions massive. Uh, ooh, unexpected file open. Nice. Uh, woo, unexpected file open. Okay, a file name dot starts with woo dot. Cool, that's what I was expecting. So the first one that I, the first fuzz case I ran through probably had a dot C extension, so it was fine with that. But in this case, if it starts with woo, we're going to assume that that's our magic input. And we'll start doing our corruption.
once again, this this uh, these syscall handlers are absolutely garbage, and they will fail in a lot of edge cases. But that's kind of not what I'm looking for right now. Come on. I just want to see it crash. Oh, it's still lifting stuff. LTO, man. LTO just makes the biggest function. So this is actually a really good stress test of my lifter and um, graph stuff. Let's see. And then fuzz inputs. So this reset all the inputs. There, here we're gonna make mutate input. Here we're gonna mutate them slightly in place. So it's the same fuzzer that we were using. It's it's still <laughs> on a big ass function right now. So fuzz inputs, let's see what we can do here. Uh, we're taking an FD, that's fine. VMID, that's fine. Fuzz inputs, VMID, that's fine. We have an offset. That could potentially be out of bounds of the... Yeah, that could potentially be out of bounds. For sure. Um, maybe LTO is a mistake. I'll just rerun this. I just want to see if I hit the same crash again. I should eventually hit a crash because this offset could be out of bounds. So I'm going to say if let sum input equals o, o input dot get offset dot dot. We're going to make that failable. Then we're going to do this. Else, uh, set reg, they're always handled. Um, set reg to, in that case, it's the number of bytes written. And then in this case, it's just going to be a straight up zero. Let's add threads. Oh, shit. Was I getting, was I getting 30,000 fuzz cases per second on a single thread? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, that perf is about the same as the 6502. I'm kind of surprised. Let's see what we're going to get now. At that decoded. It's, it's going to take so long to lift a lot of these things. So we're going to slice it up by the offset. If the offset is not in bounds, then we're going to return zero. Zero bytes read. I think that's what we want for write or read. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Zero indicates EOF. That's what we want. OK, cool. We got no fuzz cases yet. It's still, it's still just lifting. These functions are just massive with LTO, just massive functions, which is really stressing kind of the scalability of some of my graph library stuff that I know I have to rewrite anyways. I have some like n cubed shit. I think my register allocation is n cubed, so I need to change that. So then this is going to slice the input to the smaller of input.len, that's in bounds or counts, that's fine. Then we're going to write to the MMU, the vert adder buff input. Okay, here we go. We got some, we got some good stuff going on here. Trace. All session run panic. Oh, I guess I don't know why that panic, did I? I control seed too early. Well, let's, uh, let's build this without LTO and reship it. It shouldn't be a huge difference in perf. Uh, make clean all. Scoop that over. Reopen it here to fix up these offsets. 
that are definitely going to be different now. 11F60 is the entry point. 11F60 is the entry point. And then uh, malloc 1E5DC. We've got realloc. Free has free good okay I think we did it and we scooped it over we did all right let's see what we get now much better cool uh, let's put it single threaded so we can see those traces cleaner. Okay, and let me set up my characters here quick. I guess we're waiting for that to run anyways. This, this, that, this. Okay. That. Shit. Okay, did that panic? Or is that not done yet? That hasn't panicked yet? Okay. Whoops, my bad. Thought it had panicked. Okay. This, 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 this. What's going on? New coverage? Interesting. I'm confused why it's like getting really slow in some of these cases. I know that my graph library just kind of sucks and I got to rewrite the whole thing, but... Okay. It's running, still doing stuff. I just need to see what that panic is. There's a bunch of stuff in here that I just kind of slice up willy-nilly. Uh, this one should be fine now, the read, because it's a failable search the input, and then here it looks for the up to the length, so that's fine. That's writing there, writing the bytes written. Uh, oh, I think I know what it is. Uh, we have a chance of not putting the input back in which we have to do there, because we took it. We have to put it back in there. That might be what it was. Uh, let's add 256, see if we're hitting our panics again. Basically, once we had EOF, if we did another receipt, uh, read, we would end up panicking pretty hard there. Oh. Okay, that's everything. Run, call, VM exit. Unexpected open of tags. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, tags. That's when it's about to write out the tags file. Um, I think we're just going to do this. If file name equals tags... Uh, continue next VM. So we're not going to handle it. Anyone who wants to go read tags, that's the end of a fuzz case. Um, and we'll mark it as such. That's when it's about to output the tags file. Of course, that's when some out-of-bounds accesses could happen, but none that I know of. I just want to make sure everything's roughly working correctly. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. And... I think they're all blocking on that same JIT right now. Dude, I have no idea what function they're working on. That's so big. I'm going to add some prints just so I can see what function it is. Uh, I want to look at lift here. Prints lifting x pc. 
and then optimizing. And then this is validating. Let's see what we got. Ah. Optimizing dot zero, dot zero, dot zero. Deploy. See what we got. Oh, let's put it single threaded so we can see where it gets stuck. New coverage. I can't remember if I had any timeouts. I think it's actually inside of the JIT right now. Let me add uh, enter VM. Print enter JIT. Print leave JIT. Now this might mean that I have an infinite loop bug in my or some bug in my emulator that is causing me to hit an infinite loop. Or there's an infinite loop in C tags and I just didn't catch it because I like disabled that. Enter leave JIT. Yeah, clearly that's, uh, let's see if we're hitting, we're probably hitting a trap here. Uh, print syscall, maybe one of these is not happy. Is it literally reading one byte at a time? That's totally what it's doing. Well, there goes all the perf. Let's see if it gets stuck. Read. I mean, that's a lot of reads. Is it seeking? No, it's just reading. Oh, I need to, uh, fuck. I need, uh, this. I need to update the offset on reads. Update the offset by written. One byte at a time. Yeah, I don't think it is. I think it's because I wasn't updating the offset. Guarantee it. Bunch of malics and shit. Now we're just fuzzing. Pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. That's totally what was happening there. So you can get rid of the syscall print. Or I can leave it commented out. And then I can get rid of all these prints. Well, that was stupid. Probably could have left LTO as well. That's totally what it was. Not updating read. Write doesn't matter, but yeah, this one, then it was never hitting an EOF, so it was just literally reading forever. Okay, decodes, looks good. Hit new code, decode and shit as it hits it. I think I saw some crashes. Yeah, what do we got? We got crashes reading this stuff at 21F94. 21F94. This is in... L entries. Yep, this is a known bug. Cool, so we can find bugs. Um, okay, good to know. Let's turn on the threads and see what our perf is. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Nice. Things still might be hitting infinite loops. I'm not sure. Hitting crashes.
Yeah, we're getting no new fuzz cases right now. But they might be blocking. Okay, a bunch of crashes. Uh-huh. bunch of crashes okay now it's starting to fuzz beautiful 99,000 fuzz cases a second and climbing bunch of crashes yeah bunch of out of bounds 127,000 fuzz cases a second 135,000 yeah we were getting what 10,000 on uh on the 6502 version Man, that's, that is a quick boy. Damn right it is. <laughs> Jumped to 234 unique crashes. <laughs> They're quote unique crashes. <laughs> they're not they're not actually unique crashes. They're unique crashes. They might be. Yeah, that perp's looking a lot fucking better than 6502. I mean, the 6502 code gen was absolute dog shit. Um, ah, you're correct. Unique. Just like your mother told you, you're special. All right, so what I want to do is I want to get the fuzz cases per second number. Um... I want to do the effective fuzz cases per second. That doesn't count the time that I spent. Um, doesn't count the time that I spent lifting because this number is not accurate. It's going to be climbing until we get to some like actual number. Uh, so I'm going to do that on FIPS and BINST. Uh, so I'm going to figure out basically what percentage of the CPU time we're spending inside of the VM. So to do that, we have a couple different perf counters. I think I have a total counter. Reset, unaccounted, run. Um, the VM counter is fucking useless. Uh, VM cycles, VM, VM plus equals, RDTSC, statistics, statistics. What do we got? We got total cycles. Total cycles is computed from start ticks and end ticks. And we update it. Uh, so this is, we run forever. Restore, and then the VM cycles, run cycles. That's just not accurate. Yeah. I think I want total cycles to be here. And then we'll grab this here. Oops. Uh, what does that subtract? Start ticks. We'll just do that here. Oh, we have the thread update global stats. Oh, I see. Well, I'm smart. Yeah, so I break out about 10 times a second. I break out to update stats. So if that... If we've been running for more than 100 million cycles, then I'll break out and update all the statistics. Fucking, wow. How thoughtful of past me run cycles. So we're going to change that. Uh, so run cycles, I think, is what I currently print as the, like, VM cycles, which is totally not accurate. Uh, percent enter. Yeah, and enter... Where do I print PCT enter? That is run. Yeah, that's this run cycles. Well, that's trash. So I'm going to change that to the actual cycle spent inside of the VM. So run cycles is equal to that. We're going to go down to here. We're going to add run cycles. Honestly, just around enter JIT is fine. So DDP D1 enter JIT right here. Bam. Update. So this is the number of cycles we spend in enter JIT, uh, which doesn't really have any overhead. That's a that's a fast boy. 
Uh, four ninety nine. Oh, we don't have a VM. Thank you for the follow, man. Get Sukama. Thank you so much. Run aisle session. Oh, self. Nice. I was like, shit. I might not have access to VM. I totally do. Self run cycles. So run cycles is now going to be the uh, percentage of CPU time spent fuzzing. Or like inside the VM executing shit and not not doing JIT and crazy stuff. So run cycles is going to be pretty low right now. Yeah, we got some crashes. Yep, 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 yep. So run, 4% run, 94% unaccounted, uh, lifting and JIT. Those are good. Uh, lift. Okay, so now what that means is I can calculate the effective fuzz cases per second. Um, so this is basically going to cut out all of the cost. This is the number that everything will converge to once all the JIT is done. But right now, since there's lifting going on, the JIT has a non-zero cost. So we'll print uh, here. And then we're going to change this to EFCPS and effective billion instru instructions per second. And this is the, like, um, uptime is equal to... Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. I want the JIT cycles. Actually, I want stats.total cycles as F64 as F64. So... Um, this is going to be like the effective uh, effective VM time. Compute the effective time that was spent, uh, and this is run cycles. Uh, compute the multiplier that will give us the effective fuzz cases per second and... Uh, Based on 100% uptime, uh, 100% uh, in JIT execution time. So now I take these fuzz cases per second, multiply it by effective VM time, and the instructions, and we're going to multiply that as well by effective VM time times effective VM time. One, two, three, four. Actually, I think that might be easier to read. I don't know. It doesn't really matter too much. So this is now uh, stats moved where? Ah, here, D3. Ah, uh, drop stats. So that gets rid of the lock. Which is good, if true. Okay, cool. So now that will get us a multiplier. Total cycles divided by run cycles. So if run cycles is 100%, it's a one multiplier. Otherwise, it's going to be some crazy, crazy number. Cases will be accurate, so we'll be able to gauge based on that. So this will tell me what my actual kind of perf numbers are. I'll move that over to another screen here. And now we can just see everything on this screen. Uh, well, that's not too bad for perf. It's dropping a little bit with some feedback. Run time. It's run not gotten updated. Oh, one of the VMs didn't merge in. I see. Okay, crash. Bunch of crashes. Still lifting some shit. Yeah, about 650,000 fuzz cases per second. Which is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah, 600,000. Probably a little bit more than that. We're at 22% runtime. So now this number is going to climb. Um, that number is going to climb now that the JIT's mainly complete. Uh, the percentage of the CPU time that we spend running the VM is going to go up. Unaccounted is going to drop down, uh, which will just get better and better and better over time. Okay. Yeah, so this perf is a little bit better than the 6502 one. Uh, just a smidgen. Yeah, I think 6502 was like 10k per second. Beautiful, and that number's climbing. Yeah, we're get we're getting fuzz cases now. 
Okay. Well, I guess I can try the LTO build. God, we got so many. We got so many crashes. <laughs> got crashes for days. Uh, yeah, I could switch to the LTO build to check that out. Um, this run number is just gonna keep climbing now. Uh, now that the JIT's mainly completed, which is good. Um. Yep, run is continuously climbing, which is great. I'm really happy with those perf numbers. Obviously, the fuzzing is working. We're getting crashes. We're getting increases in code coverage. Um, wow. Wow. Let's add uh, the instruction counter in there. Uh, if false true. So we can see the instruction perf. This shouldn't matter too much now that we're doing loads and stores. And then we'll switch over to a LTO build again. So we got to do FLTO. And then this is like LTO opt or some shit. LTO-03. Oops. Here. Make clean all. Cool. And then we'll scoop that over. Okay. And then we'll re, uh, reopen or re-disassemble everything. The start address has changed again. We have uh, one, one, one e e eight. Malik. And this is running the application from the entry point. We're not even snapshotting around where the actual file is like getting used. And we're hitting an open and all sorts of shit. One d nine b four. Realic. This is one e seven. Uh, one e seven c eight. Free. This this perf is actually much better than I expected. One e b five c. Okay, that's built. Uh, we copied that over. This is now the LTO build, and we enabled the instruction counts, so we'll know how many instructions were executed as well. Okay, we got a big function we're lifting. Once again, that's probably main with LTO. Got some more big shit we're lifting. Still haven't actually broken out of the loop. Kind of interesting. I can look into how I'm breaking out of that loop to try and improve my like run stats and stuff to cause these to get updated more frequently. But this is kind of what I expected with LTO. Functions are uh, a lot more complex, a lot harder to lift, but we'll just give this some time to to do its thing. And we'll probably get fuzz cases pretty soon here. Once these big functions are done. There are only so many functions in... There's probably like four or five functions that will get inline, like massive functions. So there we go. Looks like we're starting to get fuzz cases in now. Only on one core they came in. Yeah, run is at 0 0.000. That's why I'm glad I added the effective fuzz cases a second. We still have some doing some jits. Come on, settle in. 296 cases, they're still, they're still just doing their jits, man. There we go. We just got a bunch that came through. Still don't have accurate counts on any of this stuff until all the cores free up and are done lifting their their blocks. Still not done. God damn. That is insane. I wonder what these are. Two one two one two thirty. Two two thirty. Yeah, basically, oh, we're probably gonna see main hit a couple times. Two and two thirty. Interesting. The cores are finally starting to kind of do stuff. Cases is still not climbing every time. We're still in some, still in some jit shit. 
or lift stuff. Man, these graphs are insane. LTO, man. LTO. There can't be there can't be too many more functions. So if no one's familiar, LTO is link time optimization, and it basically allows like global inlining across like all functions. So you'll end up with functions that will get like copied multiple times. The functions will include like all of their sub call subroutine calls and just it'll just fucking explode into these massive, massive, massive things. So Hey, cases is now increasing, kind of. It was increasing reliably for a second there, and then it stopped. Now we're getting our crashes. Come on. Come on. Just finish. <laughs> finish up, man. I want to see what the perf numbers are. Oh, my God. What are these hitting? And they're all like hitting the same functions at the same time. I guess that makes sense. They're running so fast that they'll end up hitting the same functions. Dude, I just I just want to see cases reliably in What the fuck? How much code is there here? <laughs> Holy shit. How many functions are there? There we go. It might be running now. New coverage. Yeah, we haven't seen a new lift for a while now. I think it's running now. I think it's running now. LTO honestly wasn't that big of a perf improvement. Crash. All right. Hmm. Only 7 billion instructions per second. It's pretty weak. I think I need to do some optimizations on my, uh, well, I have, I have reg prop turned off and dedupe turned off, which are my biggest optimization passes. So I'm, I probably would run like 15 billion right now with all those passes enabled. Um, what about fuzz cases? Yeah, fuzz cases look looks pretty accurate. 650,000 per second. Um, and that run number's climbing, which is good. Hitting new coverage, which is great. But... I guess I'm using a terrible MMU shape. Oh, we hit a new thing. Um, yeah, I guess the shape that I'm using for my MMU is kind of ass. Because I'm doing a full 64-bit address space. I could honestly fit everything in a 32-bit address space pretty, pretty comfortably. Decrease the cost of some of those uh, MMU lookups. Um, I don't know how much divergence I have, to be honest. Uh, so I'm going to switch back to non-LTO, because fuck that. It wasn't really a perf improvement, which makes sense. JITs aren't going to benefit too much from LTO. Uh, make clean all. Okay. Build that. Fix up all my offsets. Start. It's probably just all these again. Malik colon. Yep, there we go. Luckily, we just had those in history. And now what I can do is I can tweak this. I can tweak the MMU a bit. Um, MMU, first time I've seen DWM in the wild. Oh, man. DWM is where it's at, man. It's all I've been using for a long time now. Honestly, I might just do a 24-bit address space. How big is that? Uh, 16 megs? 2 to the 24, 
16 megs? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a big ad. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's plenty big, I think. Uh so then I need to update page table skip to be 30 to 40. Uh skip sum 40. Then we'll change the base for allocations. We're just gonna put that in range. 7BB700, is that in range? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because that's going to be, that's 24 bits right there. So that's in range, which is good. Um, and then we'll go switch over our custom allocator here and have it allocate at like uh, C0. That. Yeah, that's 16, that's 24 bits. Okay. So we'll see. And we scoop that. We did. We'll do it again, just in case. Uh, 888. Uh, yep. Soft MMU. Page table depth, 3. All right. So that'll change our page table size. Instead of having a full 64-bit address space, I don't know if this will give us too much perf. Uh, we might have some, yep, panics. Attempted to add memory that already exists. What's the highest address that this makes? I can't imagine it's up there. C00. Where? 426. In main? 444? Okay, not there. Add memory. Create master VM at 50. Oh, I'm making 32 megs a stack. Or for allocations. Well, that's unnecessary. Let's make room for OX40. That many allocations. That's plenty. That's plenty. That's the remainder of the address space. Okay. Decodes. Looks good. And... Coverage coming in. Good. Lifting shit. Okay. Crashes. Accessing shit. Great. Hung up on some stuff. Still lifting. Still lifting a couple things here or there. Not quite stable yet. Okay. I'm actually surprised that didn't have that much of an effect on perf. I guess we don't know yet. It's still doing some lifting stuff. Probably getting pretty close to being stable now. It almost looks like it hurt perf. Uh, LTO might have helped us, and it's having the instruction count stuff on that's hurting us. I don't think the allocation stuff would hurt us. Yeah, I don't think it is. Yeah, I guess with LTO, it was a little bit faster. But, yeah, without reg prop, perf's gonna really hurt on an architecture like this. It's really gonna hurt on an architecture like this. Shit. Shit. And I was having issues because a register wasn't set up correctly for a syscall. Yeah. Yeah, my perf's getting demolished by not having reg prop on. Uh, so if we could turn on reg prop. If I do this, this is this is not gonna work because we're not gonna have the right like syscall register state for something. It's really annoying. You're gonna see like invalid syscall or unknown syscall or some shit. Unhandled syscall probably.
I'd expect that would be the case. Or it just doesn't matter. Um, I don't think it changed. Unless there's a collision on one of the syscalls. Because I, def I definitely saw like a syscall number being stale when I had reg prop on. Oh, perf's dropping pretty hard. Yeah, I'm guessing I'm getting stuck in a syscall. Yeah. Yep, because run's going up, and I'm still... Ah, okay, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Um... Huh. does seem like it's dropping. Perf's kind of dropping when run's going up, which is a little, a little suspish. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little concerned that, that I was getting those stale, uh, syscalls. I I really need to be able to turn on reg prop and dedupe. And to do that safely, I need reg prop. I think I need it so traps don't um I think register states need to be flushed on traps. So I could maybe treat traps as an optimization barrier. Um Let me see what I can do. So I was having that when I just loaded the base application. So we're going to have fuzz is just going to return zero or return. And we're going to see what we get here. Said it's a single threaded. I want to see if that reg prop has given us problems. It should. It should because the registers are going to be stale on those VM exits. Here we go. Uh... Integer overflow memset size. Yeah, that looks about right. That's in memset int on VM exit 404. 404. Set permissions here. Yeah, I think I think these are getting stale. These are getting real stale. Print syscall. We're probably going to see the same syscall a couple times in a row, which is going to be... Brrr. Well, we're going to see it eight times in a row, but uh, we're probably going to see... Yeah, syscall 2000. And let's see what it's allocating. 2000. Print alloc size len. It's just going to be some outrageous value. Guarantee it. Because this is not... Yep. I don't think this is supposed to be... If I turn off reg prop... Uh, if false. So disable reg prop. I don't think we'll see this behavior. And this would make sense because the registers aren't flushed on those traps. Failed to read instruction... What? What? We got that set to false. This deployed. Those have been fixed up. It's definitely a different result, but kind of weird. Failed to read instruction. 14F28. 14F28. Oops. Jump to C entries. C entries. Yeah. 
That's fine. What's going on now? What have I what have what have I changed? Reg prop off. Dedupe is off. Um. Pro the program's the same. Let me double check. Reloaded this. One for F sixty. One E five D C should be Malik. One F three F zero should be Realic. One F seven eight four should be free. I guess the only thing we've changed is that MMU layout. Fail the reinstruction. Um, crash right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are these, dude? What? What did I change? Crash right this, accessing 4,000. 74F0. 74F0. What the fuck did I change? Add memory at alloc base, which is C0. Set up those malloc addresses. I don't think I have any other hard-coded addresses. Nope. Unless I am... Unless my address space isn't large enough. That's the only thing that I've really changed, is this address space size. So we'll go to uh, We'll do a 32-bit table. Set this to skip 32. We'll set this 00. Very 32 bit. And then this one, we'll add two O's up here. Very 32 bit. Ah, uh, yep. Forget, I have to modify this. All right. See if this fix fixes it. If it does, then clearly. Oh, it's because I'm not setting alloc base. I need to at least do those. That's totally why. That's totally fucking why. It's totally why. Yeah, I was I was returning allocations to literally like the fucking program okay alex size okay and then if i set if i turn off reg prop so this i can undo all this shit set that back and then this i can set back and we'll put the return here well that would make sense Probably important to set the allocation base for our allocator to not be zero. You know, it's the little things in life. All right. Good. Do I have reg prop on? I do. I'm not hitting those issues anymore. Eighteen eighteen billion instructions per second. Five point two five point two million fuzz cases per second. Well we're not fuzzing though. Um 
I'm trying to think if regprop was actually causing me issues and causing that syscall to be bad. The register values might definitely be stale. They'll be stale if they're set in the middle of a block. If they're set in the middle of a block where a trap occurs, I think... Yeah, I lose quite a bit of perf there. And then dedupe I couldn't run. Am I running LTL anymore? I'm not. I turned off LTL. Let's see if we can get dedupe passing now. I don't think so. I think dedupe's going to be really unhappy. Is that using 256? No, I think it's single threaded right now. Is it? No, it's 256. Damn it. Yeah, 256 threads. We're actually passing right now with uh, dedupe. Shit. I was hoping. I was hoping. Okay, we got dedupe on. Uh, let's see if dedupe can survive when we have fuzzing on. I think regprop is going to be invalid. I will need to write a case to prove that, but I'm pretty sure we already had that earlier when we switched. Hmm. What hardware is it running on? It's just a single uh, Xeon Phi processor. Come on, please. Allow me to dedupe. Oh. Oh, please. No issues yet. I want it to stop lifting. Just stop. The more, the more dedupes, the worse. Uh, okay. Well, there we go. What is this complaining about? Clearly not very happy. Poison error. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. So I'm guessing uh, I'm gonna turn off reg prop and we'll see. Actually, turning off reg prop might make dedupe not an issue. I'm just looking for gains. Come on, come on. Hey, we got crashes. That's good. I, I highly doubt that instructions per second was accurate. I guess it could be with the, with dedupe. It's actually, it's actually possible. This is what, out of register allocation? Okay, I got a, I got a trick that I used in my old IL. Uh, deploy, first we'll get rid of Rust backtrace. We'll set it to zero. Hopefully zero works. I, d I don't know if it does. Thank you for the follows, guys. I stream kind of intermittently, so following is kind of the only way to know if I'm streaming or not, unfortunately. It's just kind of... Random. I, I advertise them on Twitter, usually. But, let's see. Why is that binst so fucking big, man? Out of registers for register allocation. Yep. So... 721 billion instructions per second. I'm trying to think if dedupe is that fucking important or if I'm getting errors here and dedupe is causing this to be incorrect. But that seems more accurate, to be honest. This does actually seem more accurate based on the fuzz cases per second. Ah, uh, that's actually hard to say. Let's see. Let's do let's do some maths here. Uh 690 690 million, 690 billion divided by 622514. This would be saying 1.1 million uh, instructions per fuzz case. See, that sounds pretty accurate. Like before when it was, what was it? It was like seven? This seems a lot more, although that seems fucking high though. 
I'm trying to think if dedupe would cause that number to get corrupted. Because the other case would say 10,000 instructions per fuzz case. Maybe that's more accurate. I, God, I don't fucking know, man. I have regprop off. I have dedupe on. Uh, and dedupe is huge. Flow graph up, scene instructions. Go through all this shit. Only used once. Distance up. It's going to look for things to replace that are doing the same operation. I mean, there is a chance. As long as we're finding crashes. I... I... Dude, I'm... I mean, it, it's, 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 mm, it's possible, but it's really fucking unlikely. These numbers are coming down pretty hard. Out of regs for reg elk. Like, I just... Mm, maybe, I have a, maybe I have a bug in dedupe. I would have to figure out what it is. Like, the perf hasn't gone up. The eye count has significantly gone up. Um, trying to think if dedupe would cause eye count to get corrupted, but I don't think so. Add eye count, I see, val. Shit. I feel like my rig prop doesn't have bugs, but uh, maybe it does. Yeah, we can we can do the YOLO thing. We can uh, we can turn off all optimizations. I think there's a chance that this crashes because I it I might be relying on some structures I generate and optimize in in my register allocation. Let's see. This is probably gonna panic. It's gonna be like unwrap none value. Yep. What we get. Unwrap on an unvalue in JIT 250. Yep, and that's going to be looking for a data structure in here. Dominators. So we'll do, um, we'll go this way. We'll call optimize. And then in optimize, we'll just do, so we do reduce. Get rid of this. All right, so just don't just don't do anything. It'll still generate the tables, but it won't do any optimizations. I'm I'm just curious what this performance is gonna be. Ooh, 100 viewers! Holy shit! Thanks everyone for hanging out. I know it's late. I guess in Europe it's actually early. It's like what? Probably like noon in Europe in some places. Okay, this is at 8.2 billion with no optimizations. Perf numbers dropping a little bit here. Fuzz case per second dropping quite a bit. Oh, God. God bless, brother. 2.07 a.m. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Yep. Um... Well, it seems like like my optimizations don't don't change much. I guess that probably makes sense because almost all my perf is going into my um, going into memory operations. So at the end of the day, if ninety five percent of my CPU time is spent doing memory operations, there's not much I can optimize in the graph. It's actually kind of cool to see this though. Um, six hundred thirty six million. It's pretty solid. But dedupe, man, what was what was dedupe doing? Why was dedupe causing us issues? I'm gonna let that run out a bit. So to do that, I think I need to do, I need to JIT and then out of IL registers uh, and JIT. Out of, where's JIT? JIT, here out of hardware registers. 
register commits, out of registers for register allocation, and then here I'm just going to have this return. That's reg allocate. I see. I'm going to have this return an option. Um, and then we'll have the allocation, and then here, if belk.len is zero, then return none. That will cause register allocate to return none, which then will do uh, an option u size here. And then here, I'll say uh, I think I might be able to do it that at the end of the JIT. Actually, any return path, I think I might have. No, I probably shouldn't have early returns. Have all the fix ups, and then we'll have some here. Okay, so now. Hardware reg got an option 330, 337. Belk 0.insert. What? Uh, popped out unwrap. That should never happen now. And then graph entries. This is unhappy with me now. So this is on JIT. So what I think I'm going to do. Um. lift uh, I'm gonna have a flag here this is gonna be optimize bool lift here I'm gonna pass true I'm gonna optimize and then in the case of a lift okay Lift. That's a different thing. That's going to lift the IL. Okay. Lift. FN lift. Here. Then, if this fails, so that's going to optimize. We're going to get, we're going to wrap it up. We haven't commit anything yet. We're going to create the assembly. Then we're going to JIT. And then here, if graph entries is none, then we're going to do return, return lift without optimizations. Uh, let graph entries equals graph entries dot wrap make this one mutable this one doesn't need to be mutable so this will try to jit it if it fails then it will fall back to no optimizations and then this will be if uh optimize optimize and then that's gonna have fn fn optimize and mod and this is like uh Lightweight bool or heavy, we'll say heavy optimize. If heavy dedupe and reg prop. Uh, actually, we want reg prop off right now. Okay, 370. In aisle session, I think we can just pass it PC. That's probably what we pass. And I think. We might have a mutex issue here. We might have to drop some shit, some variables. Actually, I think the new... Uh, I actually think the new... This might work. So if allocation fails, it's going to fall back. So I'm going to get rid of these at decoded shits. E dot dot uh, print. Okay. All those are gone. What else we got printing out? Coverage. New coverage. Bye. 
Thank you guys for all the follows. You use C language? This is actually Rust. But it's close. It's close. Okay, mem regions. Now there shouldn't be really any spew anymore, so it should be a lot quieter. And... Bam. Oh, accessing that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't... I don't think it's running a billion instructions per second. The fact that that's happening kind of concerns me. And let's see, is it stuck right now? It seems stuck. Reg elk failed, and then it kind of... No, nah, it looked like it was kind of stuck before. I think there's something about my dedupe pass that is not not correct. I don't know what it is, which sucks, but I'll have to debug that, and that'll be a, uh, dedupe. That'll be a doozy to debug. So, we'll say if false and heavy. So, turn that off. Some, something must be broken with the dedupe, which sucks. How are you liking Rust? I love it. It's fantastic. It's all I need, dude. It's perfect. All right. Crash. Yep, those are legit. Billion instructions per second. That looks fine. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. Uh, it's kind of dropping. Why is it dropping? Why is it dropping? Why is it dropping? Maybe dedupe is fine. Maybe maybe dedupe is fine. I wonder if there are infinite loops. All right, all right. We'll put dedupe back on. We'll let it run a little bit longer before we come to a conclusion that it sucks. Does it pick back up after a timeout? Um, no, a, a timeout would just like terminate it. In this case, I have timeouts disabled entirely. I think. I probably do. Okay, and then we get like a huge number in instructions per second. I actually think those instructions per second might actually be accurate, but there's one that's like putting max int or some something nuts in there. Um, dedupe shouldn't touch registers. But now it seems like everything's falling off. Now, dedupe is a very expensive optimization pass, so I might be sitting inside of a lift right now. I might be trying to lift something. Trillions. In theory, in theory, I can run, like, just a little over a trillion instructions per second, but not on a real workload like this. And then that's just plummeting. It's stuck. All of them are stuck. Um, now is that due to dedupe or is that due to my shitty logic that I implemented here? If, uh, where did I do that? Let's see. I guess I need to add some print somewhere. Let's add, where do I want to do this? Lift. FN lift, an aisle session, we'll go here, oops, lift, if it's not there, if it's not there, then we're going to start lifting, print, lifting stuff, and we'll print the PC, PC, text, alright, let's see if we hit that, 4am, so catch you another time, see you around man, hope you had fun. Hope you had fun. Lifting stuff. It's good. Lifting stuff. Okay, it's looking good. Mm. 
and that's... We get that Reg Elk print, and that's where I'm a little concerned. We do have locks kind of going on in this ballpark. Here, I'm going to say... Uh, here, we'll just do it here. Print, Don Lifting. Don Lifting, and then we'll print the PC. That'll only happen when we're about to return out from a lift, and then we'll be able to see if there's a mismatch and we're like stuck in there, in which case we might be optimizing something. Dedupe is a very expensive, expensive optimization pass. There's a chance that we're literally just hanging out in there. on lifting, lifting stuff. Okay. We're lifting something right now. We failed. We failed to lift it. I see. So let's see. Did I set that up in the JIT somehow? There's a chance that maybe I commit something here. Create a new graph. Lift. Lift cycles, uh, opt uh, optimize it, create a graph entry, global JIT, lock on wrap. So we're going to get access to the global JIT. We're going to create assembly. We're then going to JIT, and then if that fails, we're going to go into this fail path. I think I need to drop assembly here. I think that might be the issue. PC base. Master cache insert. Yeah, we're not updating anything in the graph until we get to that phase. Let's see if that actually fixes it. Drop assembly. I mean, that should be getting dropped when we return with this. Self.lift. And we're just reinvoking ourselves, but with a different flag. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, I don't either right now. Oh, not anymore, man. I'm pretty confused. Okay, there we go. And we should be getting another print for lift. Out of hardware registers for Reg Elk, current commits. And that should be causing us to return out print early ret re lifting let's try this something's something's fishy here graph entries is none that should propagate all the way up and i'm not sure why it's not when in doubt add more prints absolutely Absolutely. I'm very much so in doubt right now. Early ret, relifting. But what's interesting is we're not seeing, when we hit early ret, relifting, we're not actually seeing the print in lift. I think I'm deadlocking it. I'm kind of surprised because I don't, I didn't think deadlocks were possible. We have a lock held here on global JIT. What else do I have a lock on? Master cache and global uh, global JIT are the only things I have locks on. That's at a later stage. So I can explicitly drop them. Like it's the only thing that would make sense. Or if another thing is, is lifting the same thing and waiting for that. Oh, wait. If something else... No. We should be able to see lifting stuff again. It should just go re-enter and go down into the lifting stuff path again. So master cache and global JIT. Global JIT, master cache. Like I, I think lifetimes should either catch that and it should panic because it's a it's not good. I'm really confused why that's not panicking, to be honest. Or it's not deadlocking, but I feel like it is. I feel like it is. Um, 
lifting stuff. There we go. So now it fucking works. What the hell? Lifting stuff. Dude, I have no idea. Relifting. I apparently need to explicitly drop those, otherwise I deadlock. I'm really surprised by that. I feel like that might be a like rust bug or something. Cause I'm pretty sure if you take the if you try to lock something twice in rust, I think you get a panic. Like a poison panic. So I'm really confused there. Drop that global jit. I was getting a poison error. Yeah, that I get I get those all the time if another thread crashes, but in this case that's not what's happening. I think everything's running now. Doesn't seem like it's lifting anything. Yeah, some crashes. Yeah, it's just some crashes. Not not a big deal. Just just some crashes. Um interesting. I'm kind of skeptical about the dedupe though. I I don't know. I don't. I just don't know what's happening here. Unless that's accurate. I don't think it is though. If it is, that's incredible. But there's no way that's the case. I don't propagate memories. I don't think. Maybe I am in this case. This, this number just seems wrong. I think the 8 billion makes more sense. 8,000 divided by 4.9 or 491772-ish. 16,000 instructions per fuzz case on average. That sounds a lot more accurate than this. That would say a million uh, instructions per fuzz case. I don't know what's going on with dedupe. I don't know why it is doing that. I really don't, but I guess I should disable it for now until I understand what the fuck is going on. Weird, 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 weird. Locks panic only if the thread which held the lock panicked. Oh, I see. Huh, okay. Well, then I was deadlocking. Deadlocking real good. And we got some crashes. And this seems more accurate, kind of across the board. The coverage is, oddly, the coverage is basically the same. So I don't know how the instruction counts are wrong. Unless dedupe is causing the register to not be updated in the right way, which is then causing it to get kind of screwed up. Let's see. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. Well, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do some diffs. Uh, I'll probably end up building... Um, some tracing stuff and I'll diff the trace between an optimized and unoptimized build and they should have the exact same register state the entire time through execution. If they ever differ, then obviously there's something that my optimization changed because the, the register state should be the same every instruction regardless of optimizations. So it's hard to say what it is, but I think that's probably where I'm gonna wrap it up here. Although that instruction count does seem kinda low. I don't know. 6.3 billion instructions per second. That's basically 10,000 10, instructions per fuzz case. I guess most fuzz cases probably end up with a direct error. Um, oh, well, one of the things is we have divergence. Uh, so let's just turn that off just to see. What our perf is without divergence. 
Um, let's just get rid of that. So let's not mutate. Let's not mutate each VM differently. Fuzz inputs. So there I clear them. Oh, here I need to clear, extend from slice, but then I'm not going to mutate them individually more. So this will get rid of any divergence that I have right now. This mutation right now is honestly too aggressive. It's probably causing too much divergence. So this is going to use the same input in all the VMs. So they'll all be running the same stuff in lockstep. Um, and there we go. That, okay, those look like much better uh, billion instruction numbers. Okay. Yeah, so we just have really heavy divergence. We're basically running the VMs all individually, is, is what was happening. Uh, are we lifting anything right now? It doesn't look like it. Yeah, 26 billion instructions per second. That looks much better. So if I do 26 over 6... Yeah, I had some pretty massive divergence. I just... The inputs were, were radically different. Now, I do want to see if my binst... Now, if I put on ddupe, if this is still broken. So, let's see what we get. How does ddupe partition everything? What do you mean? Let's see what we got here. So, now I got ddupe on. Regprop is off. Yeah, it's really fucked. I don't know what's causing that. The perf is going up quite a bit with ddupe. Which is really frustrating. I don't know why the ins per second... Like, the coverage seems accurate. The crashes seem accurate. It's just the instructions per second, and I don't know why. Uh, ddupe. Is there anything that ddupe can remove? If it's not non-volatile, we can't reason about it, so it won't get... So, non-volatile. Only these things will get propped. Immediate, add, sub, or, and, or, xor, shifts, multiplies, divides, sign extensions, conditional set, uh, condition sets, Fail close, marked as volatile. Yep. So ddupe, what are we going to do? How would this affect the value that is held in a register? Um, so we go through, if it's a volatile instruction, we skip it. Otherwise, we build up a database. We get the discriminant of the operation type. We get all of the parameters, the inputs. We create a key in a database, and then we put that in the graph. And we say that we've seen an instruction at this location with this key. So it's this discriminant with these inputs. Uh, then I update the stats here. Then I go through for all of the scene instructions values. If it's only ever used once, then skip it. Otherwise, go through all of the uses, and then for every use of that, if it's the same instruction, skip it. Otherwise, calculate the distance up to the replacement node if it's not reachable, if it's not in a dominator block, or if the distance is greater than the best known distance so far, then don't update it. Otherwise, update it and save off all this information. Then perform the replacement. So dist original that replace is equal to true. Uh, get the old output registers from the instruction we're replacing. Get the new ones. Go through all the old ones and all the new ones in order. Go through all of the uses of that. Go to locations that are used of the old ILR and replace them with the new ILR. And then 
Get the old ILR use locations. Uh, this is going to update uses. Swap that with a, an empty and then get the old ILR uses. And then the new ILR is used, is extended by the old ILR locations as we updated those. And then we go to the next one. I'm pretty sure. And we go to the next instance. What happens when you do a deploy? It, it's just sending a, um, it's just it's just sending a file to a server and then executing it on it over SSH. What the fuck? What the fuck? Um, it doesn't look like it's always incorrect. It looks like in some cases we're just, we're adding a massive value. But dedupe shouldn't. The only thing I could see this affecting is the loading of an immediate and then for some reason that immediate, oh, is it? Did we add some replacement stuff in the JIT? Placements, replace, a fix ups. That needs a new CSBC. Mm, that's just internal to the JIT. That shouldn't affect anything. But like coverage and everything looks accurate. I just don't know why these instructions are not. Instructions are I counts, I counts. So on a reset, we splat zero into all the I count regs. And then here, we grab all of the I count regs and we horizontally add them. Oh shit. Ah. Uh... That should be fine. So let's print these. Print merging and I counts. I'm so confused. So confused. Hopefully it's something stupid, but it, it seems like dedupe is fucking something up. Those look great. Those look great. And that looks like what we expect in the like 10,000 mark. Oh. Okay. I'm guessing there weren't 1.3 billion instructions that got executed in that case. So something, it's deterministically failing on all lanes. That's good. All right, dedupe. I think there's one issue I might have, uh, and it might be that, I think, I'm curious, return true. I'm going to return out that replacement happened, and then I'm gonna reconstruct the database. I'm only gonna do one replacement per invocation of dedupe. This is gonna destroy performance of my like lifting and stuff, but I think what is happening is I have stale Stale things in these uh, in these databases in the uses database, or in scene instructions. I think in scene instructions I'm gonna have stale shit. Because I'm not updating scene instructions, and maybe that's allowing me to replace something with something that's been removed. So scene instructions. For all the uses in here, what is this? Uh, I could maybe continue on the inside loop here. 
Go through all of the scene instructions. Yeah, this this perf is going to be so bad, it's probably not even going to run. Oh. Nice. Nice. Oh, uh, it's lifting something. If this fixes it, it so far... 28 billion instructions per second seems legit. It hasn't jumped up. It hasn't gone to some ridiculous number. Is the server running Linux? Yeah, it's just running Linux in this case. Okay, so now we're not having the issue. I think I know what it is then. It's that that database needs to get modified. The uses database. Yeah, we haven't we haven't seen it glitch out. Um, that means that scene instructions, uh, I'm performing a replacement, I'm then getting rid of a register, and then that register is going stale forever. Oh, nope, it's still broken. Fuck. Damn it, I thought I knew it. What on earth is doing that? What is going on there? Shit. 25 trillion instructions per second. Uh, heavy dedupe. 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 Uh, dedupe. Okay. Non-volatile. What is going on? This would... Yeah, well, it's not that. The replacements... Yeah, we'd only replace up to the furthest one anyways. So the candidate for replacement is going to be in the same in all cases, I think? This is going to look for the furthest replacement of something. God, there's going to be something so subtle in here. I mean, these look all correct. I don't think my immediates can change. Like, the only thing that I feel like would make sense is that somehow either the register's getting corrupted, which would make no sense because there's no way to write to that register other than the one location that I do, or the value that's being written is increasing by some ungodly amount somehow. Um, I count. And that would only happen if this immediate value got fucked. Like, maybe it's my dominators are not correct. If my dominators aren't correct, then I'm, I'm really spooked. But there's a chance. Distance up, that's fine. This is only used, I'm pretty sure this is only used in dedupe. Okay. So distance up is only used in dedupe. Um, I think this is probably allowing me to replace something that isn't reachable. I think distance up is failing. I think the logic of this function is sound. I think distance up for some reason is failing. Fast path, it does not dominate kernel, there's no path. Uh, if it's equal to it, okay, in this case, we're gonna say return none. We're gonna get rid of propagating past dominators. Unless we're making it past call sites somehow. And that could, that could be possible. We're, we could be going into a call, and we could be propagating a, a register pass to call that then gets clobbered in the call. Merging in counts. Well, this looks... Okay. Well, let's get rid of that print. Merging. Oops, in here. Okay, here. We'll see if this is broken. I would really like this optimization pass to be used. That would be great. I spent I spent time on it. Uh, 
instructions per second, hasn't been clobbered, still looks legit, still looks legit, still looks legit, yep, yep, looks legit. Um, yeah. Okay, yep, that seems to fix it. Which means that either our dominators are not working, or a call occurs maybe is getting fucked. What's call occurs? If a call occurs in the cur node or the tar in the path. How do I compute this shit? Distance up tables. Call occurs. Compute calls between blocks. Bool will be true if there's any path between those two that has a call. Okay. Is that something I need to be updating? No, because I can't I can't remove calls. That cannot change. The paths cannot change. I think that is fine. The label names cannot change. All right. So if a call occurs between those two nodes, then we get rid of it. Otherwise, validate no calls in the target node starting from the target instruction. No calls in the target node. So we're going from the target node calls. What is calls? We optimized all the shit on another stream and we probably broke it. Calls.inserts block insert ID. So all of the locations of calls are tracked. I see. So every location where a call occurs is tracked in here. I can't move those around. Blocks cannot change, to my knowledge. Yep, blocks shouldn't be able to change. Calls shouldn't be able to be removed. So that should be accurate. Go through every single block, go through every single instruction, and then record that that instruction is a call. So here, go through every single call in the target node, which is where we're going upwards to. If the call instruction happens after or including the target instruction, then we got beef. That sounds legit. Go through every single call in the target node and see if the location of it happens after the target instruction. Otherwise, go through all the calls in the current and see if a call occurs prior and I shouldn't be able to optimize a call, so it shouldn't matter. But if, all right, if I get rid of this return none, it will fail again. Let's just make sure. We're getting there. For each call instruction in the current node, if the call instruction happens prior to, but not including the current instruction, then we also, we have a call in that path. Yep, that's fucked. Okay, let's uh, change this to greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. I don't think that's the case, but it may be possible. So it's working inside the block. If the call instruction is greater than or equal to that, and it's less than that. So, yep, that's still fucked. Okay, cool. That should have been. I feel like this call occurs is what is failing me. There must be a path that I'm not seeing. Um, let's see. Okay. So, call occurs. Make sure there are no calls in that path. These ones I think are valid. 
This is going to compute the distance, but it's going to succeed once it gets to that point. I think it's call occurs. I'll label the label. So for each node, for each target node, whoa. Okay. For each node in the graph, cool. For each target node in the graph, if DOM sets, if the target node does not dominate the current node, if not that, if not, then continue. If it's not dominated, then we got we got a problem. So that could be one issue is if our dominators are wrong. But I think our DOM sets are good. DOM sets block. Uh, here we're going to calculate DOM sets. Start off as false for everything. Perfect. And then we're going to go through. We're going to set them equal to true. So we're dominated by ourselves. So block 0 dominates block 0. Then we're going to traverse, starting at block. Uh, we're going to get the M DOM to that, and then we're going to update block 0, and then traverse. So block 0 is dominated by traverse, is true, and so on and so forth. If traverse is label 0, then break. OK. So yeah, if, if we made it to the top of the graph, then get the fuck out. In this case, if the current node is not dominated by the target node, Okay, I think that's accurate. Then continue. We we just ignore that entry in the database. Otherwise, call occurs is set to false. If the current node is equal to the target node, continue. Whoa. Whoa. That'll say if the current node is the target node. I mean, that's okay, I think, in this case, because if, if a call occurs between two blocks, in this case, one doesn't if they're the same, because there's no between, which I think is fine here. I think I assume that, okay. Uh, the hash set, create visited, create a queue, push back the current node. We're on the current node. While it's not empty, pop front, uh, insert that into visited. If it's not visited, then blah, blah, blah. In this case, we're going to go from the flow graph from each node that can flow into this node. For each target in there, if the target is not equal to the target node, make sure we don't include the target node. This allows the search to terminate when we reach the target node. This is correct, as target node must dominate current node, thus all from trees must eventually end in target node. Um... Is that the case, though? Can we have a graph that flows through the target node up to something else and then back into itself? I don't think so. So make a list of visited, and then uh, node should never be equal to the target node. Skip the current node. The node is the current node. That's fair. Then if there is current node target node there's some graph flow here that uh, maybe flow graph from is incorrect reduce and this one should be updating it reduce should be updating the flow graphs Let's just see if it's not. To explore, oh, oh, that's validate. In the case of optimize, we then do reduce, 
And then here we're going to recompute those. And we're going to see if recomputing those fixes the issue. If it does, then something's not updating those flow graphs correctly. Flow is changing and some, someone's not updating it, which is, which is very possible. But I don't think it's the case. Oh, yep, it's fucked. Cool, perfect, good. Good. Um... <sighs> calls distance up call occurs current node target node you start off as false if a call occurs between these two pads we start there we traverse flow graph from all the things that can flow into it. So we look for the from references, uh, called from these targets. If the target is not equal to the target node, what is going on? Make sure we don't include the target node. Is this an issue if it can loop itself? I think that might be a problem is that might be able to loop to itself. Ooh. I think so. I think if, yeah, but it, would, it wouldn't dominate itself. It, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be in the dom set. Oh, it would be. It would be because we dominate ourselves. Um, if it's equal, I'm curious here. That shouldn't change anything. If the current node is equal to the target node, this shouldn't change anything. If this panics, I'm going to be mind boggled, but I'll also know what the bug is pretty obviously. But, yeah, this panic will not get hit, for sure. This assert, yep, doesn't get hit. Um, I think the issue is, well, we won't dominate ourselves. We're looking for a path. Looking for a path up. And, yeah, we're looking for a path up. What the shit? Target node. Yeah, I think we're allowing a value to cross a call. We're allowing an immediate to cross a call. That's totally what's happening. Is this really wrong? Every single, for current node, for every single thing, so for every single node, current node, target node. If this... Kernel does not, if target node does not dominate kernel node, and we looked at that, dom sets block zero, it dominates itself, that's fine, but in the case of it being itself, we don't insert it into this database, so we don't care. Traverse, get the immediate dominator for that, and then update that traverse dominates block, when we get to the end, we break out of the loop. Perfect. For every single call in the graph, if it's if it's a call, then we're going to save the instruction ID. Okay. Visited DQ pushback node. Gonna go through, we're gonna traverse, flow graph from. We're gonna go into everything that flows into our node. Wait a minute. List of all nodes that we could potentially visit between target node and cur node. We're starting at cur node. I think I need to do. I think this will fix it as well. 
Maybe. Flow graph two. Flow. Uh, go through each node this block can flow to. This might just enumerate basically the whole graph. 1906. Flow graph from flow graph 2. If I'm only looking at the ways that I can get to myself, but I don't allow myself to go through... If I stop at the target, then I might miss a path where I can flow from myself to that path. We're starting at Kerr node, and we're going up in the graph. I think this will fix it, but I think this might be incorrect. This might be like too strict, and it might cause us to not optimize certain things. Yeah, we haven't seen it go crazy yet. I think that's what was happening. Yeah, I think it's fixed. Well, I think this might, I think literally everything might have a call occurring now. So I got to this location, Kernode. I think I might have done this backwards. Kernode target node. How do I use it? How do I use call occurs? First label to label A. Determines if there's any path from A to B where B dominates A that a call occurs. Um... Yeah, I think I basically just disabled dedupe effectively by, by doing that, but... In fact, let's actually see if we ever um, get past this check. Print, it's possible So it'll tell us if dedupe is able to do anything, which it's kind of hard to say. Oh, it's po oh, it's very possible. Okay, so we know that target node dominates the current node, and the way that we're using this is we have a current node and a target node. We know that the target node dominates this, that's cool, that rules that out for us. Then we're going to say that by default no call occurs, and then we're going to do traversal. We're going to start at the current node, and the goal was to walk up to find all the different ways we could get to the target node. If the target is not equal to the target node, then queue it, and then we'll traverse there. This has added. So let's think of a let's try and think of a graph. Is there a situation where we could have a call occurring in a path between a dominator and that? We have a dominator and that. We have a call occurring in some path. And I, I don't know how the walking up the graph is not working. Flow graph two. Unless unless I'm literally using the wrong one. Flow graph two. Maybe I maybe I should be using two and I'm using from. Map of labels to what they immediately predicate. And then map of ladle labels to their immediate predicates. So I do want from. How? Call occurs. Clearly this fixes it, but. So that would mean that there's a situation where something dominates this node and we cannot find a path to that node via xrefs.
Which makes no sense. How could something dominate us if we can't find a way back to it? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get rid of this shit. And I'm gonna say... Let me found path is equal to true. Uh, actually, found path is equal to false. Else, found path is equal to true. And then here, I'm going to assert found path. So this is going to make sure that we always have a way back to our target. And it's fucked. Okay. So we always we always find a way back to our target node. Uh What the fuck? So this means that we have we have some block and we have an instruction in here that we want to replace with something down here. This is the same instruction. This block dominates this block, meaning this block has to execute. We'll call this block A. This is block B. Somehow, it is possible that by looking through the xrefs to find A, we always find A by looking through those xrefs, there is some path that we do not see that causes... There's some path here that causes an immediate to not be... I don't, I don't get it. I don't get how there is any path that can make it to B that we could observe that would have a call in it. I guess... B itself. This is the case. This is the only case. Is if B loops into itself. If B loops into itself, then it will only validate the instructions before this magical instruction. will only validate the instructions afterwards, and will say that there is no call here. There is no call in this section. There's no call on the path, but there could be a call here. And if this re-enters itself, I think that is the bug. If, if, if B can loop into itself, if B can loop into itself and the remainder of B contains a call, Is that true in other paths? What if this were to call C, and C had a call, but B did not, and then C looped up to here, then yes. That would also be an issue. If, if B went down to somewhere, although I would actually see that path, because this is a, an entry location. Because C has a from path, and we would cover this. We would see any possible path, and we'd include C. I'm pretty sure. Because we go through all, all the nodes we can go to until we get to the... To... 
Uh, actually, do we allow Kernode? Uh, if Kernode is equal to the target node, you know, mm-hmm. Otherwise, we start at the Kernode. We go through everything, and then here we ignore the Kernode. If I get rid of this, I bet this bug won't exist. Now, this isn't the correct fix yet. I need to figure out if that Kernode can hit it can reach itself. But I think this will fix it. Basically, if, if there's a call in the current node, it's not going to optimize it. And yeah, I, I'm not seeing it. Okay. Now, this is going to disable, I think, basically an optimization on any block that has a call. So to, um, what I want to do here is I want to say, if pushback, if target is equal to cur node, re-entrant equals true. And then here I'm going to say, let's mute re-entrant is equal to false. That's during the traversal. So we'll say re-entrant uh, can the cur node pass through itself, e.g. a loop. If so, it must be checked as well for calls. Then in this case, because uh, this was trying to ignore it because it's always in the queue, which means it's always invisited. In this case, if the target is not e if the target is not equal to the target node, if it's equal to the current node, um, mark that we can loop to ourself. In which case, if if it's not re-entrant. If it's not re-entrant or, ooh, if it's not re-entrant and the current node is equal to the node, then we skip it. And this way, if it is re-entrant, uh, then we won't be able to hit this continue. And then we're fine. And then we fix the bug totally, 100%. And then there should be ways to skip the current node only if it cannot reach itself through a path. Please, 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 please. It's looking good. It's looking good. And I'm going to make sure that this is still skipping some things. Print skipping. Oh, that looks like that fixed it. Very subtle, very subtle bug. So this should hopefully print, and this will show that we're not being over re overly restrictive. Cool. Yep. Skip the current node if and only if we cannot reach ourselves in a loop. Perfect. So that problem is solved. If we're not re-entrant, which is default unless... We find a path by looking through the flow graph that reaches ourself again, in which case loops exist. And if loops exist, then we have to factor in that we could go through ourselves on the path, which makes sense. We can get rid of the flow graph too. And now this is correct, and there are no bugs. Interestingly, we haven't hit a single bug in our emulator. Pretty impressed with that. Pretty impressed with that. But yeah, this is now working. And we're doing dedupe. Nice. We haven't hit the like regenerating case, which is interesting. Maybe I got rid of those prints. I can't remember if I did. Thank you guys for all the follows. 
All right. So now we're running 29 billion instructions per second. And I can optimize that a little bit more. I think I can get like a, a, a 3 or a 4x speed up on top of that. So this is a good preliminary. I think I can get this to probably 100 billion a, a second. Uh, I need to change my MMU quite a bit, but I have some design ideas that I think would fix that. But it now looks like this is working. 2.6 million fuzz cases per second, 29 billion instructions per second. And I don't have reg prop enabled because I can't turn that on apparently. FN optimize. Reg prop actually gets me a lot, which is frustrating. So let's turn that on. We didn't have dedupe on when we tried it, but I think this is an issue because the registers might not be flushed, which means it won't know what the syscall number is. This might panic in like a weird way or some shit. I think what I could do is I could treat a trap as a call. Steady instruction count? Yeah, thank you. Um... 33 bill. The crashes all look legit. I mean, I, I do think this is actually working. Um, here's what I can do to guarantee it's correct. I can say calls. This is this calls database. And luckily, everything's centralized. So calls are basically used as locations. Um... These calls are basically locations that you can't perform optimizations across. You cannot optimize across these boundaries. So what I could potentially do is I could add a trap in there, actually in reg prop. Um, I could cause reg props to flush on traps. If it's a call, oh yeah, flush them. Ah, oh, here we go. Flush all register rights when a trap occurs. So when we see a trap occur, we'll also flush the reg rights. And now that means when we go to make a call, we'll make sure all the registers are flushed. And when we, when we have a trap, we'll make sure that the registers are also flushed. And that means that by the time we get a trap handler, all the registers have been flushed and synced to their correct states. This is now correct in all cases. So let's see what this settles in on for perf. And now we have all optimizations running with the exception of really complex blocks that we run out of, um, except for really complex blocks that we run out of registers on. So I'm gonna get rid of, I guess, I guess I'm fine with this print. So I'll just let this run for a minute. But yeah, it's looking pretty solid. Yeah, that got us a little bit of a speed up. Not huge, but a decent amount. Um, and then what was our conclusion on... So reg prop is now safe with traps. The register state's not going to be flushed on certain exceptions, but that's fine. But just on traps, which are all our syscall implementations and handlers. Um, that's looking good. It's looking real good. Let's see, what do I need to add? I need to add What was I gonna change? What do I wanna change here? We got all optimizations on now. Right? All optimizations on it. Yeah, let's uh 
I forget, I forget what our last conclusion was of LTO. I can't remember if we could or couldn't do it, but we're going to put it back on. I think it just slowed the dev cycle down at the last stage. I think things were still building with it. If, L, if FLTO make, make clean all, deploy that shit. Recheck it. Okay. 1-1, one, one, EE8, malloc address. Uh, simple malloc, malloc. Here we go. One nine, one D nine before. We got realloc, realloc. Got one E seven C eight, and we got free, which is one E B five C. Okay, I got all those correct. Okay, this is like the super optimized LTO, full optimizations on all our lifting passes. It's gonna take a while to lift. I think this will just take longer to run, but to start up and everything. Yep, relifting something with LTO out of hardware registers. Oh, I guess without LTO, I wasn't having to do that, but that just turns off dedupe uh, for those blocks, which probably isn't terrible. I guess these are the blocks that likely matter the most. It's hard to say, but yeah, they'll go back and relift, which is good. Relifting. I really need to add uh, like thresholds on my dedupe so I don't end up running out of registers. It would have the same effect as having a uh, having spilling on my register allocation. I think it might actually be easier to just do it like that. Yeah, I remember why I turned this off now. Three bill, don't care. It's still lifting everything. Yeah, it takes so much longer with LTO. I just still have some, I think it's my uh, register allocation that's really slow still. Come on. Come on. And it has to relift these twice. Done lifting, lifting stuff. How many blocks can there be? All right, I'll take a bio break. I'll be right back while this runs. All right. Well, if that's any indication of the perf we're going to get, it looks like it's going to be a speed up, which is cool. But not sure yet. Still lifting. Until these cases are steadily increasing and it's still like lifting stuff, I'm just not happy with these numbers because they still, they still might plummet or drop or change uh, as we hit more and more functions. There are all our crashes. Now we're starting to get fuzz cases. We're gonna probably have a couple more lifts. But yeah, there the perf the perf just tanked. It went back to like the, the 31 billion. Which is what I expected. So yeah, it looks like that's a negligible amount of perf increase. 
So there's kind of there's kind of no reason to run in that mode. But yep, now that run percentage is increasing, which means there's going to be like more meaningfulness in kind of the values that we have. But yeah, uh, 3.2 billion fuzz cases per or 3.2 million fuzz cases per second, 31 billion instructions per second. Uh, looks pretty good. So we'll go back to no LTO because it's just not is TLDR not worth. Build that, ship that off, and then we know that these addresses are all fixed, and we can rerun this, and this will be the non LTO version. And it looks good, lifting. And in this case, we actually don't have any issues with, uh, uh, we don't have any issues here with too many registers being used. So we're actually fully optimizing everything. Yeah, 36 billion, that's gonna drop a little bit, I think. But I think this is up and fuzzing. Yeah, 31 billion. 3.1 million fuzz cases per second. All right, let's see if we can uh, actually turn on some of that corruption again. I'll just turn on less corruption than I had. So I was doing way too much mutation. I'm gonna switch that to like four of those and maybe like eight of those and four of those. Because my perf's gonna drop as I have divergence because then I'll have to execute only a couple VMs at a time. I won't be able to, or only like one or two VMs at a time instead of all eight at a time. So decreasing the corruption will increase my overall performance. But yeah, bunch more crashes in this state. And there we go. So this is with corruption, each one getting slightly different inputs, and we're still running about a million fuzz cases a second, maybe a little bit less. Uh, there we go. We hit some new functions. We got more code coverage, but yeah, of course there are going to be perf losses with divergence, but I don't really care because divergence are data points. So anyways, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to make some dinner and uh, go to bed. So <laughs> hope you all enjoyed. Thank you for coming by. See you around next time. Thanks everyone for following and uh, follow me on Twitter as well. I think I might have Twitter. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, I don't. Twitter.com, Gmozo Labs. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I've, I normally tweet out my um, streams a little bit before I, I actually do them. But yeah, it looks like we're settling in at almost a million here. Plus or minus, hard to say. Anyways, thanks everyone for stopping by. See you around next time.